crumb on my face there. I don't want any crumb on my face. It's just like in the, you know, institutions, they like to preserve, they like to preserve their reputation. I had a little bit of wine this evening, and I'm reflecting on one of my favorite poets, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams is one of the greatest poets of all time. If you want, if you want to steep yourself in Southern culture, if if your name is Mike Webb and you like to steep yourself in Southern culture, you can do no better than presenting Tennessee Williams. Now I had, when I was a student at Rock Valley College, I was terrified of public speaking. Some people would say, well, but Jeff, you taught, I have taught college courses. I have been a substitute teacher in this community for many years in the 90s. I've done many public speaking engagements. But you know, I wasn't always good at it. I wasn't always able to do it. I was afraid. I was terrified. And I had to overcome that. So some people who have experienced this, like, we can't get... I've been trying to get a J. Rockefeller for president. Like, get this guy, have him run for president. You know, because then I, there might be a job for me because I'm a political scientist. So he might say, well, you know, Nelson didn't get a chance to run for president, but I'm going to run for president. I mean, he might feel intimidated because he might say, well, he might be 75, 80 years old by now. It's like, it can't be, we can't have that a president that old. But see, young ladies today, they like old men. They like older men. And the nation needs like an older guy who can actually, because wisdom, you know, wisdom comes with age. Reflection on many, many years of history. You know, somebody whose mind was alive and active during the Vietnam War. Somebody who saw the Civil Rights era. Somebody who saw World War II. You know, who saw and saw, met many of the diplomats who were involved in World War II. It's this kind of experience is absolutely something essential to somebody guiding the nation in the future. Like, at this time, that's what we need. Aristotle and his politics. He makes this very clear. That the wisdom of the age should be something that is, that is utilized for religious, religious offices, for educational institutions, and for the preservation of culture and cultural ideas. But since we're a democracy, as Plato teaches us, people, the, the young people in the past, this is not true today, by the way, and it's partly due to the erotic component of young ladies. They're attracted to older, why are they so attracted to older men? Partly because some of them have not had the great relationships with their fathers that they would like to have. So now it's attractive to them, whereas one, at one time it might have been repulsive to them for older men. But today, young females are more attracted to. They're, even young girls are more attracted to older ladies. And part, not some of them, not all of them. I'm not, and I'm not making this by any means, I'm not limiting this to erotic attraction. I'm saying as friends, as, as erotic, as just general concern in general. I have noticed that in this country, young, younger females, they have, um, they have an enormous sensitivity and concern about elderly, el the elderly. They are good in this regard. You know, but I'm uh, pointing to this possibility. It's just possibilities. That's what you. That's what you. That's what we think about when we look at these things. You know, I could spend the rest of my life cursing wealth, 
cursing Rockefeller, cursing George Bush Sr. and others. But I quite frankly do not believe that um, Jay Rockefeller or David Rockefeller would be the caliber of president that George Bush Jr. was. There'd be a difference, see? There would be a difference. Even though they, those people may know each other. And I'm not making any... I don't believe that George Bush Sr. was the same caliber of president as George Bush Jr. And I'm not being hard on George Bush Jr. Because I stood in my very classes and said, well, hey, you know, this guy's kind of struggling against... He's got the father thing going on. He's got the... My dad was, you know, this big president, and now I've got this thing to live up to. And there's, it's, it's not, it, those people are friends, okay? That's, I'm not naive. But on the other hand, those symbols are powerful. You know, I know that because my dad, I always looked up to my dad in a way that I was like, I can't be like my dad. I can't be that good. And I bet if Jay thinks about his own father, he thinks about his own grandfather and his own grandfather's father, that he feels like that too. He feels like there's something better back there, like in that golden age. There's something that we aren't today. And then he feels like he can't be, he can't be better than Bernie Sanders, or he can't be better than Hillary Clinton. But he's, you know, the Democratic Party in the United States has a lot to do with he and his brother. And the sort of the Republican Party, you know, because their they that their concern is how either party will in re, will react to be in the view of businesses like the Pepsi Cola Company and other companies. I'm just pointing to my Pepsi Max over there because I love my Pepsi Max, you know. I don't like I don't like wealthy people that oppress me, but I don't I neither neither do I want a country where there, where I can't get Pepsi Max because that's got red Panax ginseng in it, and it's very good for circulation. So if any people are like suffering circulation, I'm going to tell my friend Joe soon. Panax ginseng, good for circulation. See, when you got high blood pressure like I do, when you're a diabetic like I am, I know I can drink it and my feet feel better. So I can walk better. I can think better when I when I have it. It it has an effect. But um, but this dimension of statesmanship, a guiding the people, being a guide to the people. You know, it's quite frankly, a president doesn't do everything in the American government, and it's kind of an illusion that we have that you know you put the president in this power, and then he does everything. But it's not him, it's him and the vice president. It's him and the presidential cabinet. It's the presidential cabinet, the president, the vice president, and the Congress. It's the Congress and the Supreme Court. It's the Congress, the Supreme Court, the vice president, the president, and the local governments and state governments. It's everyone. It's the citizens, too. You know, so um, do I think the, that a person like Jay Rockefeller and his brother could bring something to politics that others cannot, yes. Does that, does that mean that there's some kind of, I'm a poor person, am I obligated to hate wealthy people? No, but am I obligated to want the best for all people? Yes. And that's what American politics is about. It's about kind of securing the compromise position that preserves the unity of feeling among the people and that protects the people from dangers within, without, all this kind of thing. Every bit of that goes into it. But I think that some politicians, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is a truth. There, it, it depends on money, see? If you're a wealthy person in the country, can you bring more to the country than other people can bring to it? In a way, yes, not legal not legally speaking, like you couldn't act as president and say, "Well, I'm acting because I'm wealthy." On a practical level, do you have can you have more to say because you have a broader influence because you have like been educated all your life? 
into people who are knowledgeable about politics and who can make substantial change. See, some politicians can come, Bernie Sanders can come to power and he can say, well, I'd like to see a kind of review of all the states to make sure that they're all up to par on education the way Rockford became reorganized under the people who care lawsuit. But can every president bring as much to bear on that as every other one equally? No. There are differences. Because some guys have direct connections to the Wall Street Journal. They have direct connections to the Washington Post. They have direct connections to the Chicago Tribune. They know how to use the press. They know how to get the word out among the people. They know how to activate and mobilize people. Now, this not this is not an insult to um, any president that has acted before. It's just a reality. It's just a reality that has to be admitted. But um, uh, so I early a couple of days ago, I learned that Nelson Rockefeller was planning on running for president back in the it looked like back in the '60s, and he didn't actually run for president. But that. Is some that's a dimension of the you know, but if you're one of those people like Jeff Newsel used to be, who's afraid of public speaking, like you're not afraid to talk to 50 senators or 100 senators or 400, even 435 representatives, but you're like, oh man, if I stood in that, thousands of people, that's too, that's maybe you, you know, because Jay and his brother, they get to, they usually get to exist like in a small group of people where they know everyone and they can reach out to everyone. So it might be a bit intimidating. But I I think that person would bring competence to that field and he would bring the he would have ears full of what the people have been saying for years and an interest in listening to what they have to say in a way that some others might not have listened to what they had to say because they did not have as much as they did not have as much at stake to protect see or to be concerned about see because that's another aspect of american politics you get into politics if you're a leader of the people you try to do what you can for them you don't, every leader in America, you know, there's a, there is sincerity in some of our leaders. There is insincerity in some. But it's a difficult government. It's, it's meant to be, it's meant to be an obstacle to someone who would come in and just monopolize all power and then uproot the government. France, as my friend John Hart reminds me of many times, has had five republics since the 1789 revolution. The United States has had one government. You know, there's a difference. So you have to look at it that way. Um, you have to look at what's possible. What's possible for a person? What does a person want to realize? It could be that in, in the past, you know, just as I suggested when there was a Bush presidency, there was the fear of my father's but better than me. Just as I felt that fear and a friend feels that fear. Could be that that fear is every bit as active in the intellect of that person. You know, that person, David, Jay, people they know. You know, um, I don't know who else might be, many other people might be mentioned. But we need effective leadership at this time in history and we need we need leaders that are committed to preserving the symbols of the history of the nation so we can maintain a continuity of the people and a conception of the people and we need we need that we therefore need effective and powerful leaders for the future of the nation and that's what has to be considered we don't just need anybody randomly selected from the Democratic or Republican Party. We need somebody who is who can powerfully appropriate the past and reproject it to the people in a way that causes them to feel unified again.